Hi, Laura. Hi, yeah, UK. That was perfect timing. <laughs> so <laughs> we're just waiting for it to kick over to quarter past. We've got uh, quite a few schools with us already. Um, and we've got some of the uh, Cyber First team as well. So I'll just give it one more minute just in case we've got anybody extra joining until the end. And then I'll give a little introduction and then we'll hand over to you. Give us uh, your session. One second. OK. Right. Don't think we've got anybody waiting. So I think everybody that's joining is joining. So I will introduce you to our last speaker. So Laura is concluding our lineup today. Um, so Laura works for a company called Clarinet as a continuous uh, security testing manager. So if you don't know what that role is, I'm sure by the end of the next uh, session that Laura will have filled you in on exactly what her job entails and why she does that. Um, so Laura leads a team of testers who provide top tier services to lots of different clients. Um, and her cybersecurity journey has been about eight years, I think you said, didn't you, Laura? Um, so she's gonna talk to you about um, why she's uh, taken up a career in cyber, why she was inspired to do that, and a little bit about the role she does today. So I'll be turning my camera off, uh, but I will still be here. Um, so I'll hand over to you, Laura, um, to get started. If you do want to share a presentation or a PowerPoint, that's fine. Uh, just share it as you normally would in any other Teams meeting. And then we'll have some questions um, at the end. Cool, sounds good. All right, can you see my screen okay? Yes, yes, we can. Perfect. So, as Sally mentioned, I'm Laura. I'm um, the Continuous Security Tested Manager at Clarinet. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit around sort of who I am, what my background is, what my job is now. Um, I'm predominantly going to kind of talk to you about the offensive side of security. Um, so, I'll move on with my slides. So, firstly, obviously, who am I? I'm, uh, as I say, I work at Clarinet. I've got eight years experience in the cyber industry um, and that whole time I have been at Clarinet, previously at a company called Sec One, but we were acquired by Clarinet um, throughout my sort of career there. Um, as I mentioned, the area that I focus on is offensive security and predominantly penetration testing. Now, you might hear that and think that's a bit of a weird name. Um, I don't know anything about that and I've never heard of it before. Now, that doesn't surprise me um, and that's sort of what I'm here to talk about today. Um, my degree was in cybersecurity as well, way back when at Leeds Beckett, and um, that feels like many moons ago now, unfortunately. So I've sort of, my career started before that, but then obviously at eight years in the industry itself. So just a, cute, a few like quick facts about Clarinet, because I know there's obviously some really big names on the lineup today that you've, you've already heard from, um, some of which you might know, some of which you might not. If you already have heard of clarinet, then that's amazing. Um, if you haven't, this is just a quick kind of rundown of who we are. So we were founded in 1996, so 27 years old now, same age as me. Um, we've, we operate in over 11 countries. We've, you know, we have a really big global reach. Um, we've got 10,000 business partners, 3,000 staff, so a really nice big company, loads of opportunity, it's loads of room for growth. Um, we're one of the global leaders in technology and transformation and security as well. So security obviously being the area that I sit in. Um, and we work really closely with some of the world's biggest sort of tech partners, some of which you might know, you know, things like AWS, VMware, Microsoft, um, Cisco, that type of thing. So my background. So where I kind of came into cyber was um, when I did my A-levels, I was doing computing, um, psychology and biology. I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do at the time. I knew it was going to be somewhere in the remit of those three things, but I didn't actually know what that was going to be. Um, I didn't actually know cybersecurity was a thing until I went to an open day um, for one of the universities that I ended up going to. And there was this talk on computer forensics and security. And I went to that talk and came away from it thinking, right, that's what I'm doing. I've decided, I've made my mind up and that's that. Um, we did this really cool demo during the open day where we had this um, hard drive that we had to forensically an analyse and there was like challenges going, how can you prove that this person was at this location on this day? And you had to go through like sat nav data and put all the pieces together, like re very like CSI vibes. Um, and I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. I was like, this is definitely what I want to do. It's really cool. Um, it's so different to anything that I'd heard of before. 
Um, and the other half of the course was was security. So when I first looked into all this, I thought, you know, forensics is going to be the avenue that I go down. Um, lo and behold, it ended up being security, which was a surprise to me as well. But once I got into doing my degree and realised the sort of breadth of security, the techniques that it teaches you, the hacking that's behind it, um, my sort of focus completely changed from forensics to security. And I was like, right, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. So while I was at university, um, I did a placement year, which was in my third year. And if if there's one thing I can recommend to people while they do a university degree is definitely some kind of industry experience. It was so beneficial to me. I did an entire year as a penetration tester um, and it just completely changed the game for me in terms of sort of where my career went off to then afterwards. It put everything into place that I'd been learning for the first two years, you know, in an academic sense, into industry, into practice and just really sort of honed my skills. So after I'd done that placement year, I, I went back to university, finished my last year of my degree. And then after that, clarinet, um, which was sec one back, at, back then, very kindly took me on full time after my placement year. So I then was a graduate and became a pen tester full time. Um, I did that for a few years and then I ended up being our cybersecurity training lead. So this didn't take me away from the pen testing side of it. Um, I just ended up being the person who helped train the rest of the team um, to make sure that we had the skills and the capabilities that we needed to, to be able to, to serve the work that our customers needed. And then after that, as of November 2022, I then took the role that I currently have, which is Continuous Security Testing Manager. And I'll get into what these things are. And um, as I mentioned, you've probably heard me say pen tester, penetration tester quite a lot, and you may not know what that is. So what is a pen tester? Um, in my opinion, it's one of the coolest jobs within cybersecurity. Um, we basically use our knowledge and the skills that we have to find security weaknesses in um, our customers' estates. So customers come to us and they say, we've got web applications, we've got mobile apps, we've got infrastructure, maybe they've got parts of the cloud um, that they operate in. They've got physical security practices, you know, so things like how do they stop people from just randomly walking off the street into their offices? Um, and they come to us and say, I want to know where those, where the weaknesses lie within all of those things so that they can go away, they can fix them and they can stop the actual bad guys in the world, the actual hackers in the world from getting in. So being a penetration tester or pen tester um, is effectively being an ethical hacker. The sort of names are all kind of interchangeable. Um, it is our job to mimic as best as we can um, actual hackers in the world. So we don't do um, the whole illegal side of it. Obviously, it is all um, we get authority to test from all of our customers and we, to the best of our ability, act like a hacker. So we try our best to basically bypass any kind of controls that have been put in place to make something secure. You know, how can we bend something to go, right, it's meant to do this thing, but how can I take it to a point where it does this thing instead? So that could literally be anything. So I've done tests where um, customers have hired me to effectively break into their buildings. So they'll go to us, right, we're not giving you any access. We're not telling you anything about our... Um, like the layout of our buildings but we want you to get from outside into let's say a server room and start hacking the network so we've managed to linger around you know stand on the door pretend like we're um like engineers trying to fix the door and ask for someone's card they're like key card to get in um we've then cloned that and used that to walk around the building and get our way to where we needed to be and likewise, I've done pen tests where um, we've been testing applications and we've managed to change our like shopping cart to be free. Basically, you know, we've put hundreds of hundreds of thousands of pounds of um, products in it and then been able to hack our way through it and gone, actually, you know, let's change that to zero and not pay for anything and told our customers then how we do that. And our customers then go away, use that information and fix these things before the actual bad guys can do anything with it. Um, so we're, we're mimicking that mindset of hackers, but we're doing it for good. We're making sure that our customers know how they can fix and protect themselves. So why did I pick cybersecurity? So as I mentioned, I genuinely didn't know anything about it until I went to a university open day. Um, when I started to learn about cyber, started to do my degree and started to go, okay, this is what I want to do. I just loved how fast paced the industry was. 
there's so much fun to be had in it as well it's one of them jobs where yes it is a job and yes you'll still have days where you think oh god you know I don't want to go to work today but for the most part it is really fun and it's so interesting all the time um the sort of challenges that you face never really go away you know you, you'll try one day to hack something that you manage to to pull off and then you'll go and test something slightly similar and think you'll be able to walk it and do the same thing again <clears throat> and you can't and something's changed again technology is updated um maybe there's a slightly different fix that's been put in place that you need to sort of like a puzzle work around and and put all the right parts together to to get the outcome that you want um and there's so many different paths that you can take as well for cyber um, in the offensive security side of things. And especially at Clarinet alone, we we do absolutely everything from ethical hacking to governance, risk and compliance. We do um, sort of we have, we have a security operations centre that's monitoring all of our customers for any potential hacks, you may, any vulnerabilities that are being exploited on their network. We do all of those things Um, the sort of possibilities are endless and you know you are actively helping protect people so it's one of them roles that it is rewarding because you do sit there and you know you might have so much fun on a test and at the end of the day as fun as it was for you you are telling um the customer that you're working for what it is that you've managed to do and it is a good thing what you've done you know once they put remediations in place and they have protected their systems you know that's one step for, forward for them to be able to to keep um, you know, whether it's their people secure, their data secure, um, you know, not lose money, protect their reputation, you, you are doing good work here. Um, so for me, it was just once I heard about all of these things, once I heard what a pen tester was and that I could hack things legally and, um, you know, it, it actually serve a purpose and a benefit. I was just hooked from that moment on. I was like, right, this is definitely what I'm going to be doing from now on. So what does being Clarence Continuous Security Testing Manager mean? Um, so the service that I run and that I manage is a continuous approach to pen testing. So our customers come to us and they go, right, having a one-off test, having a one-off, you know, penetration test to look at our applications and tell me what's wrong. I need this to happen continuously. I need you to be constantly telling me what vulnerabilities might be there um, I want to be able to fix them as quickly as they arise um, really sort of working with us hand in hand on, on bettering their security basically so that's the service that I run so within that service I've got a whole team of penetration testers that um, work for me that do carry out the service for us so I'm in charge of making sure that they're doing their day to day that they've got everything they need you know it, it's it's quite a rewarding role for me having been a pen tester myself to then run in a team of pen testers it's a really nice perspective for me to have you know I really understand some of the challenges that they face and um, what training they potentially need and any kind of issues that come up from the testing that they do I, I, I can be around to help with um other things that I have to focus on are helping develop the service. You know, what areas of improvement do we have to make? You know, what things work really well and we can leave them as is. What things don't work as well and need to be changed? Um, reviewing capacity. So, do I have enough pen testers to carry out the amount of work that our customers need us to do? Um, you know, and if not, I then need to go on and start recruiting and, and grow the team. So, another big part of what my job entails as well as working with sales. So. Although it sounds like a purely kind of technical role, what I do encompasses many different areas and the sort of many different hats that I need to put on to be able to sort of keep the service doing what it's doing. So obviously the service doesn't run if we don't have customers that need it. So a lot of what I do is, is you know, working with sales, working with solutions architects, getting on the phone, helping explain the technical side of what it is that we do, answering questions about methodologies and tooling and all that lovely stuff. Um, also maintaining the quality of the work that we do, you know, making sure that what we put out is the best thing that we could put out for our customers. Um, all of that needs reviewing on a regular basis. I'm um, dealing with any problems, you know, whether that may be cu customer queries and um, problems with the testers, anything like that all comes through me. Um, and any any documentation that the service needs to support it, you know, that might be our service descriptions. So telling our customers what it is that we do. Um, helping with marketing, what you know, explaining to them what it is they want to get across about the service, and then just um, making sure that the sort of technical capabilities are conveyed, um, and any anything else like that that sort of comes into it. So, 
it was sort of hard for me to put together what my kind of day-to-day -day looks like in this role because running a whole service it is vastly different every single day but it's always some kind of combination of this list is you know dealing with the pen testers going to talk to customers potentially putting out any fires that come up anything like that it's a complete and utter combination day in day out and no day is kind of the same and that's a really nice way of doing my job to be honest it's you know it doesn't get boring it's not samey um it's a really sort of nice way of of working so my sort of final slide before i'll move on to any questions is i just wanted to put something together about getting into offensive security so the sort of side of security that i deal with um ideally you do need some kind of technical background uh, this just gives you a really good grounding when you first start. No one's expecting you to know things about how to hack things or how to defend things or whatever it might be. But as long as you've got some kind of understanding of networking or how, you know, applications potentially work, how you access them, that type of thing. And um, that gives you a really good sort of grounding to keep going with. Um, and, you know, this this background could come from school like you're at now. It could be university, it could be an apprenticeship or, you know, you could just completely teach it yourself. Um, there's sort of no rules around it. It doesn't have to be in a particular sort of manner. Um, we've got people that work for us at the minute who did the music degrees, biology degrees, and they've through time taught themselves that sort of technical side of things and they've ended up in cybersecurity. So don't feel like you're sort of having to find it one way or another, you know, this could be something that you 100% look at yourself. Um, my other advice is just get practicing. It's something I did, you know, when I was at university, I just went away and and made sure that I sort of knew what I was doing prior to looking at jobs and, and things like that. So there's many different platforms now that you can go away and do this. There's so many sort of training um, platforms now that allow you to do it in a safe way and if there's one thing you'll take away from today please do it in a safe way um don't go getting yourself into trouble by trying to teach yourself any of these things use platforms like hack the box and try hack me that are set up for this um it, it's one of them things that you know once it piques your interest like it, you will get hooked a little bit but there is no endless amount of of challenges and labs that you can do so just utilize them to the best of your ability um, and any kind of advice that I have is, like I mentioned, don't don't get put off by the fact that you don't potentially know anything about cybersecurity. You know, if, if today was your first kind of window into what is the world of cybersecurity, don't worry about that. We all started somewhere. We all had to find out about it in one way or another. And like I say, I went to university not um, not really knowing anything about it. Yes, I knew about computing, but I didn't really know anything about cybersecurity. So don't don't let that put you off that you think oh. You know, I've already got to say potentially my A-levels and I didn't didn't know about it. Don't worry about that. Um, also, don't get caught up in the hacker image that you see on things like TV and films. You know, when you've got like this person in a basement with um, like a hoodie on and they're typing at a million miles an hour and they hack something in 0.2 seconds. Like that isn't the real world. Um, your day to day will be very normal in comparison to that. You know, you will just you'll be sat at your desk and you'll have your laptop and you'll have you'll have your screens how you want to be set up and you'll have all your code running and how it might be but it's not as sort of simple as you know a few clicks and you've managed to hack a firewall and you're away and you know you can take over the world um it is you know we are security professionals at the end of the day um we still have to present ourselves to customers we have to help them we have to give them advice we have to make sure that they get the best out of us to be able to protect themselves um and the last point I kind of wanted to make is it is quite a male dominated industry cyber and um, so any women who sort of are looking at STEM subjects and technology like don't ever let that put you off there's so many influential women in this in in tech in general now to be honest um, and the more women that we have joined the industry the more diverse it becomes and it, it is such a a lovely industry in a way to be in it's very sort of family feel place um, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit there and say you're not going to potentially have things that you need to sort of move past, but there's so many women that are there to help each other now. Um, and it is just a really kind of nice way of of joining into cyber. So don't worry about that. Like I say, don't worry about cyber. Uh, if you didn't know much about cyber, just get involved, start having a look into it, see if it grabs your attention and yeah, get going with it. So any kind of questions for me, really?
All right, Laura, I'm sure we've got loads. Thank you very much. That You're was welcome. really, really good. I'm going to pick, you, pick up on a question yeah. um, that I have. So I've got a very similar sort of experience, I suppose, to you, but in a different industry and probably mm -hmm. 27 years different. So I've actually started university in 1996 and mm -hmm. I finished in 2000 and I did an aeronautical engineering degree so very similar to your final point on your last slide um I entered a male dominated industry and I saw I had a lot of I don't like to call them barriers I like mm -hmm. to call them challenges that I had yeah. to overcome so I don't see them as a barrier I see them as right I proved myself to you and that I'm equal so what I'm wondering is obviously um you haven't long finished university and entered that industry sort of probably two decades away from when I did and I know the sort of challenges that I faced so what I'm curious to know is um what what are the challenges that you've personally faced with that just and I'm wondering if that's different to what I faced 20 25 years ago when when I sort of did my male dominated uh, job and degree that you might be yeah. able to help people going into it in the future so they can know what challenges they need to overcome yeah, so I think most of it, when I first started, and I remember my very, very first day walking into university, and I won't lie, the room was mostly male-dominated, there was not that many women, and that is quite intimidating, and I think one thing for you, for people to know is, don't worry if you do feel quite intimidated by that when you first join, it does get easier, it, it, it might be a bit of a shock in the beginning. Um, what I will say is though, I have done, that was, I started university in 2014, um it's obviously now 2024 there is a lot more women in the industry now yeah. than when I first started um and as you start to grow and you start to sort of move through your career you know you might work one place where you do feel like you're kind of the only woman sometimes or there's very few of you but then your next job somewhere else you might have a completely different um you know approach to it all it might be a very diverse team it might be very 50 50 it just kind of depends and I think some of the challenges I've faced in terms of um, potentially being a woman in tech is you're not always uh, sometimes taken as seriously, I'd say. Not yeah. in not in like, I don't know how to phrase it, but sometimes you'll enter a room and you'll be talking and all the attention kind of isn't on you sometimes. It's as if you don't always know the, the right thing. It kind of gets diverted yeah. to, to men sometimes. Um and that can take a hit on your confidence and you can sit there thinking of what is it that I've got to do to keep proving myself um, and to get people to listen. And all I can kind of say is, unfortunately, you will sometimes meet people who do, who, who give you that kind of response, but then you'll meet so many other people who yeah. are so lovely and don't do that and will listen to you the minute that you sort of open your mouth and they'll respect that you know what you're talking about. Um, and also obviously with every year that you develop through the through your career the more confident you get the more knowledge that you have um and it just you know starts to I don't say bother you less and less because it is still something that you know yeah. from now and again it does great on you but it does get slightly easier I will say yeah I would say I had the same experience but what it's nice to hear is that you're saying in the last 10 years in, the, mm -hmm. in your tech industry that you are seeing it change a lot so Definitely. you know hopefully all of the things that we're trying to do with the girls cyber first program and cyber ambassadors and things like that it's showing that it's working um Definitely. and so that's that's great to hear um there is a question in the chat from yeah. Sarah uh she's asking do do your team work in the office every day or do you have like a hybrid approach like a lot of people do now yeah so it's pretty hybrid um at the minute and it's sort of different between the teams at Clarinet as well so um you'll have our sales teams who are in the office a lot more than say the technical teams um one thing with our penetration testers is some of the work that we do is on customer sites so they might not be in our office but they are on in our customers offices doing their job so it's sort of a mixed bag um predominantly I work from home um versus being in the office but yeah hybrid is mostly our approach at the minute bit of a mix um this is a bit of a mad off the wall question which I thought of what what would you say is the most like interesting or crazy mad hack you've ever done or you've ever oh. been asked to do by a company I am um... I think there's been so many I've done so many tests now over my career and they're all kind of different and special in their own kind of way um physical security 
tends to have the best stories and tends to leave you feeling like you've really accomplished something. So I remember one of them that I did was a theatre who'd asked us to do a, um, like a social engineering engagement on their um, one of their venues. And I managed to pretend to be an actor for most of the morning to the point where people were, I made it into the green room. People were making me a cup of tea and I was sat there like trying to figure my way out around the building. Um, and we managed to, I can't remember what it was that they asked us to come out with. They were like, we wanted to go in and try and bring out, I don't know if it was a laptop or something that was owned by them. And we managed to do it. Um, and then there's been some hacks where we've gone from, say, being sat in our offices, we've been hacking a website. And through the vulnerabilities that we've found and that we've chained together, we've ended up as complete admin on their internal network. So we've been in charge of absolutely everything that could be like we could turn their entire network off if we wanted we've gone from sort of zero to 100 with it um but there's so many to pick from I could go on all day about war stories from Ben testing. I just thought I just thought that was a bit of a crazy question yeah yeah <laughs> yes, and I think it's a off the wall one um so we've heard from a lot of people in a lot of different um a lot of people in a lot of different roles and things mm-hmm. today um and we have been asked quite a few times um in the questions how people think that the cyber industry will change in the next sort of five years but if we specifically looked at the role that you do Mm -hmm. how do you see sort of ethical hacking and pen testing changing and evolving in the next five years yeah so I think um it's sort of evolved already in terms of so when I did penetration testing it was um very point in time you know one one test a year per customer that type of thing it was very kind of tick box oh I've got to do this test I'll just pay for it and then I can tell my customers that you know I'm I'm secure and I've done what I need to do the shift that we've seen recently and that I think will only grow over the next few years is people really taking security seriously um you know the hacks that we've seen come out in um like mainstream news and the the data dumps that have gone on I think it's really made people wake up to go where I really need to start paying attention now and and implementing security properly um and then obviously with the addition of things like AI um that's coming out I think it'll sort of change the way that we work a lot more it'll make things a lot more efficient um and there'll just be continue to be new technologies that we've never faced before you know potentially having to pen test AI products and things like that is something we didn't look at 10 years ago um yeah and I think that'll be where the change starts to come from. And I think there's a lot of um, sort of pen testing as a service um, changes that will go on. So customers all want more of a sort of continuous relationship with us and make it really easy to just be like, I need this pen tested and I need this retested. And, you know, instead of it sort of being the traditional, yeah, having to go out to a, cust- uh, to a company, fill out a big form, you know, have it all scoped out and it'd be mm. quite a slow process. I think it's just going to get quicker and more agile as we go on. And I think that from what you've described there it sort of fills why you said you love your role, the diversity mm-hmm. of it and how it's yeah. different every day. So it's like people coming into that role are still going to see that it's just going to keep evolving and keep changing. Yeah. And as everything gets the other side of hacking gets more advanced, you're going to develop with that. And yes, yeah, so it'll be really interesting. I have got one other question, but I might actually have to actually ask Sarah because I'm not quite sure what you mean. So she's asking... Um, if you do level three apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships, T level work placements, I think Sarah, are you meaning that do they do this at Clarinet? So do they take on level three apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships and T level work placements? Yeah, I could I can sort of chip in there. I'm just interested in in how you recruit because mm-hmm. we've been hearing from the other uh, speakers, you know, I, I don't know how they, what kind of people they look for. But do you do? Do you take on? Yeah, do, do you have degree apprenticeships, or how do you how do you recruit at Clarinet? So we have done a couple level four apprenticeships recently. Um, two of our um, more junior roles within the team, they've just been two level four apprentices. They've now graduated um, and okay. now in in a full time position. Um, the rest of the recruitment kind of comes from graduates and placement students and um, obviously then, you know, standard people with experience and things like that. But we we have a really mixed bag, to be honest. Right. No, that's great. That's good to know. I'm just, uh, yeah, finding out. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Excellent. Right. I'm potentially going to ask Nick if he can. I don't, not sure. Yes, Nick is there. Nick, do you want to uh, drop back in if you're able to? Yeah, he's put his... 
There we go. So just bringing Nick back right. in at the end. Mm-hmm. You're probably all sick of hearing my voice and my random questions. So just to sort of before we finish, thank you very much, Laura, is what I want to say before I hand over to Nick. And then I'm just going to let Nick sort of do the last little little bit at the end and I will sit uh, quietly and listen to you. No, uh, thank you very much, Sally. And Laura, thank you very much. You've got a, a career which is massively interesting. So I did something very similar with pen testing and it's uh, oh, nice. So especially physical is is my special speciality yeah. too. I really enjoy that. Um, I think thank you for everyone, all of our speakers today. Um, the diversity in speaking and different careers and backgrounds from financial sector to pen testing to forensics has been really really interesting to hear. Um, and thank you to all those who attended. Really, this program is about giving you the option and showing you what's in front of you. As I said this morning in my keynote speech. The opportunities now are very exciting, especially in this sector. The, you know, we often hear about the, the negatives in society and, and you know that job market's tough, but we've got real, real significant opportunities here, especially over the next five to 10 years as, as you grow uh, into free degrees and degree apprenticeships and apprenticeships. The need is only getting bigger, as all of our speakers have highlighted today, especially with that question. I've, I've asked everyone the same question about what it's going to look like in the next five to 10 years, because that could be the point of your career entry. And hence that, that sort of thought. The jobs that we're talking about now, the position that these all of these great speakers are in now will look very different in five years, as we found ourselves five years ago when I was working on OSX models and iOS models. It was completely different to what my, the engineers who are still there now doing those doing that. Um, so it's a very exciting career, and I really hope that you to see you um, apply for the bursary and to see you at our Cyber First events across the Northeast Yorkshire and Northern Ireland who are here too. And hopefully um, we'll then see you in a position like Laura is right now talking to us about how this has worked for you and how your career has blossomed. Um, what we'll do is we will follow this up with information on how to become a cyber first school, information on our next events as well that are coming up. And especially if you're in the school as a teacher, the cyber first girls competition, which is a huge, huge passion of mine, um, as my business partners will all tell you, um, <laughs> We run it every year um, it targets key stage three girls to get them in. So this is a bit of a pitch at the teachers here to, to, to encourage them to take GCSE computer science so that the options always there for them. So do look in your inboxes. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with our outreach team. Uh, Sarah, who just asked that question about recruitment, uh, she, she leads in the Northeast and you'll see Claire Garside who leads in Yorkshire. And if you are in touch with uh, Eamon in Northern Ireland, you, you can reach them directly and they'll happily provide you with a host of opportunities and speakers to uh, from industry to, to work with. So thank you very much again. Um, and we look forward to seeing you really soon. I think well, we're in Clarinet next week, so we look forward to seeing you, Laura, um, if you're in Leeds for the, the steering group. So um, thanks. And Sally, thank you very much for being our compare. You've been, it's That's been a okay. fantastic day. Um, like I say, I'm going to back out now and, I, and we'll we'll send your next communications will come directly via email. Brilliant. Thank you, Nick, for just doing a little close there. Um, what you will also receive as well via email is the little Slido questions. So I'm very much hoping now that our final question. So, Laura, just to put you in the loop, uh, at the beginning, we asked everybody the question, would you consider a career in cyber on a poll? And it's on 50-50, 50% no, 50% yes. So all of the students are going to be sent um, a poll to ask after this last session. Um, so now they've seen all the speakers. So it would be great if you could get your students to fill those in as well. So would you now consider a career in cyber? Um, the students aren't allowed to use the phones um, in lessons. So I will send that out. Um, and this session has been recorded. So if you would like to watch any of the sessions again, um, once our marketing team have done some uh, fancy editing with it, and we will be putting it on our YouTube channel. So I'll share the links to that as well. Um, and the last thing, just yeah, thank you very much, Laura. Um, it was wonderful to hear um, about your role and the job that you're doing and thank you very much for speaking today and everybody else that's spoken as well all the schools that have joined um hope your students have got a lot out of today so thank you very much and as Nick says we'll be in touch about any future events so thanks for joining us today